All right. So our next uh, question in this uh, subsection, what point charge is moving, um, should be pretty interesting. Uh, I don't think it's be much. I don't think it's gonna be very difficult, but it'll definitely be a uh, organizational mess if you're not good at bookkeeping. So let's be very careful with that. The statement reads: Show, uh, show that the scalar potential of a point charge moving with constant velocity can be written more simply as v r of t r v of r and t is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, times q over r square root of 1 minus v squared sine squared theta over c squared, where script or where capital R bold is equal to the positional vector minus the velocity times time is the vector from the present position of the particle to the field point R, and theta is the angle between capital R and V. Note that for the non note that for non-relativistic velocities, relativistic will come in chapter 12. Let's not hurt ourselves already. We see that V squared is much less than C squared. So that uh, approximation term in the square root kind of fades away, and we're left with 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R. So what we found is that for a constant velocity potential, okay, we have uh, v, R, v of R and T is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, QC, much like last time, square root of C squared T minus R dot V squared, plus the difference of C squared minus V squared, uh, and then times R squared minus C squared T squared. Blech. Mess. A whole lot of mess. But, uh, we got to be able to simplify this down, and we will do that by focusing our efforts on the term in the square root and substitute in accordingly. That being said, let's go ahead and take that square root from the uh, no section and uh, foil it out, get it nice and clean. What we see when we foil it out is that we have a couple dot products there that need to be taken care of, but we also see that we have a c to the fourth term canceling with the t squared. We like that. Say bye-bye. More Less things to worry about later. Um, okay. And then now we can condense things a little bit better. And we see that uh, we have a couple terms that we could rearrange. Namely, the r dot v can be rearranged into r dot vt, which we see in red on the third line. r dot v is easy enough to stay put. Then we uh, refactor the c squared minus v squared times r squared. We can just leave that alone. And then we have we see that we have a c squared, a v squared, and a t squared in the last term of the second line. Again, we'll just put the v and t together. So what we notice about v and t specifically is that, and while they're color-coded red, is because in the question we were told that that was equal to little r at minus uh big R because R was the difference between the two. Okay, so we substitute that in. Why? Well, now let's go ahead and do some more expanding and simplifying. Okay, so after we substitute in, which we saw in the R, the next line down, R dot, little r dot, little r gives us R squared, and then we have little r dot big R, that's the dot product we need to evaluate, um, and then you see here, uh, we just carry down the R dot V with us, C squared minus V squared, R squared stays with us. And now we expand at R minus big R squared term. So we get R squared minus two little r dot big R plus big R squared. If we were to redistribute everything from the first parentheses, the R squared parentheses, and the C squared parentheses, I tried color coordinating as much as I could, and we get a ton of cancellations. How wonderful is that? Um, that being said, uh, you know, after we're done distributing and recanceling as much as possible, we still have to do some cleanup work here. So that r dot v goes to the left hand side since everything else cancels. We're left with v squared r squared. And again, all the r's are going to get, all the little r's are going to get color coded red again. And then what we're left after the distribution is c squared big r squared. Okay, now let's go ahead and try to push everything into the big R formation and V's. So again, little r was told, we were told was big R plus VT. 
Again, that was all in the uh, statement of the question. And so, once we plug that in, uh, I think you can guess what we're going to happen now. That's right, we're going to try to expand and simplify. First, we're going to distribute the uh, dot product with V in the first term, and we'll just square out the red term. Okay, so you see we have parentheses, uh, big R dot V plus V squared T all squared minus V squared times the bracket, everything in there, plus C squared R squared. So, as you might expect, we once again have to distribute uh, at least the parentheses, and as you see with the color coordination, we get a lot of cancellations yet again. Um, so as you see, it's a weird back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, okay? Um, and what we see moving forward is that now we're left with an R dot V, a V squared R squared, and a C squared R squared. And <laughs> that's wonderful. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and show you a diagram that we have where if we're looking at what R is with the difference between V and um, little r, we know that at point Q, big R goes to some field point that's in the diagram, as you see, but Q is moving uh, to the right with V, and so they have an angle in between them. And so geometrically, we know that the dot product is going to be the magnitude of big R, the magnitude of V, with the angle in between them, the cosine of the angle. So outside of the cancellations where we see with the purple and blue, the R dot V goes to RV cosine theta squared, and then we have minus V squared R squared plus C squared R squared, and then, uh, you know, Square square everything out, uh, factors whatever we need to out. Uh, here in this case, that is r squared v squared. The negatives get factored out, and we're left with one minus cosine squared. Cool enough. Plus c squared r squared. One minus cosine squared goes to sine squared. Thank you. And uh, you see we're left with uh, negative r squared v squared sine squared plus c squared r squared. Uh, so what we're going to do is use the multiplication by one trick, but the one is disguised as c squared over c squared. So that being said, the goal now is to factor out a c squared r squared from both terms. And uh, what we see done is that we do this, and we're left with a v squared over c squared sine squared, and, or, and then one minus that. So if we plug in that denominator now, whoop, we plug it in, and we see here that... Uh, once we do that, the c squared v, c squared r squared, uh, we can push outside of the square root with factors of c and r respectively, and the c cancels with the numerator, uh, as expected. And we see that it finally condenses down to exactly what we were expecting to see. Now, although this wasn't a hard question conceptually, the math is 100% annoying to deal with, and you must take your time, and I think color coordinating it shows you how and why this uh, factor of 1 minus v squared over c squared times sine theta squared is not going to leave you alone for the rest of the book so please familiarize yourself with it you will thank yourself later